Our directions here in this example are to write each expression in terms of natural log two and natural log three. Natural log six, note our argument here is six. So I can make an equivalent expression, natural log of two times three, which of course, if I know my properties, log base A of A times B is log, I'm sorry, lo, let's do of U times V. Log base A of U times V is log A U plus log A V. Then playing the role of U today is two, playing the role of V today is three. So, and playing the role of A, of course, is E, 2.71828. So this will be natural log two plus natural log three. I know that's a little unsatisfying, but we have done it. We have answered the question. Here, a little more difficult. Natural log of two over 27. This is our argument. We're gonna use the quotient property, which says natural, I'm sorry, which says log of any base A of U over V as our argument is log A U minus log a V playing the role of U today is two playing the role of V is 27 playing the role of A is E 2.71828 because it's the natural log. So we can expand this by writing this as natural log of two careful minus natural log of 27. Well, this satisfies the condition. Ah, how can I write 27? Well, I know that three times three times three is 27. So that means three to the third power is 27. So I could write this as natural log of, our argument is three to the third power. Now to fully expand this, natural log two comes down. This little three here is by the power property is gonna come out front minus three natural log of three. Now this three is our argument. So if you want to, you can put those arguments in parentheses. Verify, holy cow, is this a proof? Oh, what joy, I haven't seen proof since before our winter break. All right, so I remember, I always wanna pick the side that's a little more complicated, most of the time. And so I'll start on the left-hand side here. So left-hand side, let's see. I know I can write one over 100 as this is equal to negative log base 10. Do I really write, need to write base 10? No. This is going to be 1 over 10 squared, which is, of course, negative log base 10 of 10 to the negative 2, which is, you know what, do I have to do that? Let's make this 100 to the negative 1. I like that better. All right. Now, what? Well, I know I can use the power property, which says, if you don't remember, if we have log base A of U to the N, we can write this as N log A U. So in other words, this little piggy can go to market here and we'll have negative times negative one log base 10, 100, which of course, negative, negative one is one, gives us log base 10, 100. By golly, I've reached the right-hand side and I've showed all my steps. What a great proof that was. Rewriting logarithmic expressions. The properties of logarithms are useful for rewriting logarithmic expressions in forms that simplify the operations of algebra. This is true because they convert complicated product quotients and exponential forms into simpler sums, differences, and products respectively. So let's get some practice doing this. Let's expand log four of the argument five x cubed y. Well, I can split this right here if I want to and say, well, this is five times x cubed y. So this would be log base four of five plus log base four of x cubed y. I've taken one log and I've expanded it to two logs. Now 
of course, I can recognize, I can split this product again using that product property and say this is log base four of five plus log base four of x cubed plus log base four of y. And finally, my argument here in the middle is x. I'm going to take this exponent and bring it down front to make it the coefficient of the log. So fully expanding, log four, five plus three, log four x plus log four y. There's our answer, fully expanded. And notice when we fully expand, we take our exponents and we make them coefficients. And now we're satisfied that we're fully expanded. Here's another example. Natural log, of course, that's base E, of square root of 3x minus 5 over 7. Note, I'm modeling this off of log base A of u over v. Playing the role of u today is this full numerator here, including the radical sign. Playing the role of v today is 7. And playing the role of our base is e, 2.71828. So of course, if we recognize that we have something divided by something, we can expand using our quotient property, which would make this natural log of 3x minus 5. That's our argument minus, careful, get your sign right, natural log of 7. Of course, we know if we have the square root of u, that is its power is 1 and its index is 2, although we don't write it. As a fractional exponent, this is going to be power over root, one-half. Note, something, some base raised to the one-half is really the square root. That's what allows me to write this as natural log of 3x minus 5 to the one-half power minus natural log 7. I'm not fully expanded yet until I take my exponents by the power property and move them to the front of the log and make them coefficients. So fully expanded, one half natural log of three X minus five, particularly if I have two terms as my argument, I wanna make sure I use parentheses, minus natural log seven. Now, do you need parentheses there? No, but I like to put them just to show the world I know that that's my argument, not my base.